G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to some props. Yes, that's right, we're going to have a look at some prop planes today simply because I thought it would be a nice idea to take a little break from the madness of jets and have a look at a particularly good plane for silver lion grinding. A lot of you guys do struggle with silver lions and I do have a pretty nice little guide up on YouTube at the moment so if you want go and check that out but today we're going to have a look at one of the planes that I particularly like for doing such things as silver lion grinding. It is the XP-38. Now the XP-38 is a very, very, very good money maker and it is a fairly good plane in itself. Although you do have to be fairly disciplined. The XP-38 is, in my opinion, one of the lost planes because it was replaced by the YP-38, which in time will probably be replaced by the ZP-38, but you know, that probably doesn't exist, so. Anyway, ladies and gents, before we get into the actual meat and veg of the video, uh, first we're going to support my water cooling addiction. This video is sponsored by Ace Defender. Ace Defender is a turn-based tower defense RPG featuring unique lore and multiple game modes. Ace Defender's main storyline follows a dragon princess looking to restore the balance between good and evil, which is where you come in. Ace Defender has three game modes, PvP in dungeons and engaging in trials, PvP PvE either within your server or across the world, and Expedition, which is the story mode, all with the ability to play at 1x, 2x, or 4x speed for a little bit of extra pizzazz. Each champion in Ace Defender comes from 5 different factions, each with detailed background stories. You can level them up and equip gear to increase their power. Ace Defender is free to play, and downloading it in the description below, you'll be helping the channel by fueling my water cooling addiction, as well as receiving some goodies. Newcomers will get their hands on 10 Royal Recruit tickets after completing levels 2 through 8, which won't take long at all. Even downloading and playing for 5 minutes greatly helps the channel out, and if you're looking for something to kill some time, maybe between videos, maybe between a long car ride while you're going on holidays, Ace Defender has got you covered. Thank you to Ace Defender for sponsoring this video. So. Moving on ahead, because prop climbing is a little bit tedious, we're going to be engaging a couple of bombers, and the XP-38G is one of those planes that is very good at that. What we're going to do is get above the bombers, and the Heinkel 111 is a very soft target for something like a P-38. We basically have on our hands some uh, 50 cals and some 20 mils, and the Heinkel 111 really doesn't stand a chance. It kind of feels wrong. Uh, to do things like that. And look at the altitude we're at. We're at a nice cozy 4,000 meters and our enemies are nowhere to be seen. They've all decided to go more mowing the lawn. I almost said lowing the morn. Uh, so we're going to turn back. There's a BF-109 above and what I'm going to do is just sort of work my way down. One of the big themes of this uh, particular plane is patience and you'll see how patient I will need to be. So, engaging this SM-79, I decide that one volley is good enough, I miss a whole bunch of shots and decide nothing of it, and believe it or not, this is the single move that costs me the match. I know, it, it doesn't sound like it, but this particular move is the one that secures the loss for me. Uh, and you'll see in a little bit, you, you could probably take a guess where this is heading, in fact. Have a look at the tickets. They're not exactly in the high spots, and this map is well known for having a very quick ticket bleed. I'm not really sure what it is about it, maybe there's a small number of ground targets or a large number of ground targets that die early on, but the ticket bleed in this particular map is horrendously high, and so if you bomb out all three bases, you tend to end up with a victory most of the time, and that makes it kind of boring for anyone else who doesn't have the climb rate to at least try to engage the bombers. On the flip side though, it does give bombers a bit of a chance on this map, and they are highly, highly dominant on this map. So if you're a bomber pilot and you have the opportunity to favorite a map, favorite this one, and you'll tend to get more Ws than usual. Speaking of Ws, I'm about to absolutely obliterate the Heinkel 111 that has gone around the side of the map. These things do not stand a chance. But now I want to show you this particular spot here, and this is where it gets even more clubby. You see, I have an altitude advantage, and the BF-109 and 410 are at low altitude. I'm the last fighter left, and so I need to be in a situation where I'm going to always have the advantage, and that is altitude. In props particularly, altitude is going to be your best friend, and having altitude over your opponent as well as uh, energy, as you can see fighting the duck, which is not good at retaining energy, I'm able to very, very easily dominate this plane, and whilst it's not really a fair fight as such, a very slow ground attacker versus a dedicated high altitude fighter interceptor, uh, well, 
it isn't much of a fair fight but demonstrating the fact that you keep your energy you win the match this sort of uh, spells it out a little bit and of course I could have gone for that BF109. At the bottom, the BF109 is likely the bigger threat. The 410 is also a big threat because he is mowing the ground targets and killing the AI, which are actually draining tickets, I think, for us. So what I'm going to do here is go for a quick little head-on with the BF109 and then pitch straight up into the vertical. And what this is going to hopefully do is induce the uh, rope dope situation that I'm hoping to achieve. The BF109 doesn't really take the bait, and so it just gives me an opportunity to redive. Although you have to be careful of uh, maneuvers like these so you don't overcommit. Now, I could have ripped my wings if I wasn't careful, but what I'm going to do is just continue straight and then go into another vertical, hoping to lure the BF109 into a, another rope dope. Fingers crossed that this one works, and because I have such good vertical performance, now. Uh, you notice that you won't get the same types of performance against a BF109E at high altitude, but have a look at this. He's just stalling out. He just cannot get his nose on target, and I managed to take out the E1 very, very easily. The 410A is uh, looking pretty sad as well, and fingers crossed he goes into the ground there, but it looks like he's going to correct just at the right time. Have a look at that. That is quite the save from the 410. So it's all right. We're just going to use our superior energy and go around, making sure that we don't end up as 12.7 uh, or 13 millimeter food. Have a listen to those 50 cals as well. Aren't they absolutely beautiful? So we're just going to let them blast away. And of course, I pilot snipe the ME410, leaving one enemy left. And that is the SM79B that I uh, let get away earlier. And you know what? That is about to cost us the match. He is the last one left, and I let him get away, and uh, the tickets have just about run out. So, well... The one that got away, the one I, I let spare is the one that ended up biting me in the ass. So remember on maps like these, it is not good for your health to be chasing bombers normally, but uh, in this case, it might be worth the shot. Now, I'm going to show you this particular match here, because this is one of the ones that I really think demonstrates the P38 or the uh, XP38G here in its finest potential. This is a situation where I have many enemies that are at similar altitudes, but I have a fair amount of speed built up. And on top of that, I am looking to engage one at a time. We're going to go for the BF109 F2 first. He doesn't really show any interest. And so what I'm going to do is loop around to this Spitfire who is concentrated here on the friendly BF109. There's a D520 in the distance. And whilst the D520 is rapidly approaching, I'm not so concerned because I've built up so much speed in my climbs. If you climb, if you set yourself up right, you will have no issues. And because the Spitfire noticed me way too late, there's nothing that the Spitfire can do. And so the Spitfire burns instead. So we are going now for the D520 and the Spitfire is in the distance. The second one has arrived and the D520 here is nice and close, slow in a straight line. I thought I might take the opportunity, send some 20 mils his way and he is critically damaged. So now that he's critically damaged, he is no longer a threat and I'm just going to go on my merry way to engage this Spitfire. With the Spitfire here, I have to be kind of careful because I don't want to end up in a low speed turn fight. I'm going to go for the head on, see what I can do here. Maybe I can squeeze off some rounds and get a nice direct hit. I pull off fairly late, which is a little bit uh, risky. But what I'm going to do here, chuck it into a vertical. Fingers crossed that the Spitfire follows. Because he's cut in on that turn, that allows me to get in on the inside, go for a quick burst, but I only get hits. And now I'm starting to play to the Spitfire's game. I should not be doing this at all. You can see how easily he turns back around onto me. And he could have easily, if he had... Uh, known better or if he was a little bit more higher in energy he could have very easily finished me off and you can actually see here how much i'm struggling to keep up this is a big no-no when it comes to the p38 you are a twin engine fighter you are designed for higher altitudes and of course you are a bit of a bus compared to a spitfire mark 1a which is designed purely for air, -air superiority then you can see how close the spitfire got to me to shooting my wings off and uh, i'm not going to have any more of that i'm going to use the ideal method with the uh, Spitfire, and I'm going to be going in a straight line, going for altitude, and of course with two engines, I am still going to be a bit faster than the Spitfire. Not only that, I do have that ability to burst up. I've got the twin superchargers. Whilst these are sort of effective around the 5,000 plus range, I'm nearly there, and I am very rapidly blasting away from this particular plane. The P-38 is one of those planes where you have to just methodically work yourself out. You can't be one of those people to just go in, 
do whatever and hope you get away with it, which is really, really crap way to play War Thunder. What you have to do is you have to take things methodically. Go from the top, work your way down, take it nice and slow. And you know what? You'll find that even if you're playing Jets a lot, you'll come back to this, you'll be playing nice methodically, and it'll be the most relaxing experience that you'll have in a long time. I noticed a lot of people just gravitate towards the Jets because they are simply the fastest, coolest, shiniest things on the market. And honestly, you're not wrong. But nothing beats a nice, slow, steady, and methodical prop dogfight. Honestly, nothing beats it. And this is the reason why we all joined War Thunder. Well, a lot of us anyway. Back in the day, we didn't have those uh, air-to-air -air missiles and those fancy afterburners and the supersonic speed. We just had guns and props and wings and... And that was just about it. And that was all I knew for a very, very long time. And to me, coming back to this is quite refreshing. And being able to re-experience this is also quite nice. Now, we're in a dogfight here with a Hellcat. And the Hellcat is very bad in the vertical because it is just fat. It's also better at low altitudes. So having myself up here at higher altitudes, I've immediately put myself in an advantageous position by being higher. Now, being higher and slow is not particularly a good thing, but I do also have the ability to accelerate a lot better than the Hellcat here. And notice this dive here has put me in a great position and I've unfortunately been able to capitalize on these hits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it up into a vertical. I have to be careful to not play to the Hellcat because if I end up doing horizontal turns, sure, I'll end up screwing myself over, but if I keep in the vertical, I know with the Hellcat I will be able to outdo him and out energy him, and that's exactly what's happened here. The Hellcat has just been unable to keep up with my absolute beastly energy. And so the Hellcat is doing one of the smart things and is heading for a little bit lower altitude, but you can see the way he's doing things. He is trying to bait me into some sort of dogfighting maneuvers. You can see how aggressively he's turning there, but you know what? I'm not going to fall for that. I'm going to go back into the vertical and try and lure him up. And basically, whoever takes the bait or whoever hits the deck first is the loser of this particular dogfight. And for me, I want to keep it that way because the first person to hit the, the deck will be the F6F. So diving in again on him, I'm going to take it nice and slow. If I don't get shots off or if I don't get a good target, I'm not going to worry about it because at the end of the day, there is plenty of ground and plenty of time. There are no enemy planes around. It is just a pure one-on-one -on -one dogfight and I get all the time in the world with this F6F. And if someone else wants to come along and ruin my fun, well, I have altitude and speed over everyone else on the map. And that is the importance of that climb. You might think that the climb in, in uh, props early on is quite boring, and in some cases you're right. But playing at this tier, you're not climbing for hours and hours, and whilst I have cut the climb out of the video because it's not quite as entertaining, I thought there would be some better things to sort of squeeze in, maybe like another game that I could squeeze in, and uh, you know, you're going to have three here, and fingers crossed they're all going to be very enjoyable for you guys. So we are simply dominating this guy because we just had the climb over him. And whilst the F6F originally had the altitude, he did unfortunately waste it a little bit. And that's kind of what's costing him the most here. I get a critical hit on the tail, it seems, and that is going to be enough for me for a little while, seeing as though that the F6F is fairly, fairly damaged, but he seems to persist. And so I'm gonna roll over one more time. Remember, there are no enemies nearby that can pose a threat. And whilst the F6F is pitching straight for me, there is just no way he can handle the energy of the PK-38 or the XP-38. And look, we're not going to talk about that. I don't. I genuinely don't know how his fuselage soaked up that many 50 cals. But you know what? I have another round. I have the ability to go around, get more energy, and bring it in once more. And this is the beauty of that boom and zoom. It is so therapeutic, and hopefully you guys are enjoying watching this because I definitely enjoyed this little engagement here. It was very, very entertaining because you just methodic, relaxing, and I just love it. So, now that we're done with that, we are going to be engaging some other enemies here, and I'm going to go straight for the climb because remember, altitude is king, and the P-38 is the altitude king at this battle rating until you get fully up tiered against like a Yak-3, and then you can shit your pants somewhere else. But uh, the Yak-3, you can pretty much deal with if you have any altitude, maybe side climbing a little bit, and of course, boom and zoom. So, this Spitfire here doesn't seem like he's paying attention. He might be paying attention there to the ground, because that is about to come up very close on him. But I think this was the guy that I got some hits on earlier, and it gives me the kill. 
which is very nice. I wasn't expecting to get the kill, but you know what? I'll take it. What? Sometimes the snail taketh away. But you know what? When the snail giveth, it feels extra special, because it seems like the snail likes to taketh away more than it likes to giveth, and when it does giveth, that makes it extra special. So, speaking of extra special, uh, my flying abilities here are a little bit uh, on the low side here. We have a BF-109, and the BF-109 is going for a little bit of a dive. Now, I'm glad that he's made this mistake before I've had to make it, because now I've put myself in a very good position here. The BF-109F has done a massive turn. Think about the turn he's done. He's done about a 180, he's gone down and now he's trying to go back up whereas I have just done a little bit of a spiral climb I've put some flaps up and I have had the speed advantage over him so have a look at where his nose is it is just not going to make my plane so I'm totally safe I pop my flaps to make sure I get some extra lift and I let it rip with the 50 cals setting a fire and my god is this plane not the best for rope adapts in the entire game this plane is just pure insanity when you have the right tools and when you have the right situations, it is just phenomenal. And of course, because it's low tier, it doesn't take too much brain power to use and it is an excellent silver line grinder. So if you have the XP38G and if you need SL, go for it. Uh, and maybe I'll make a video on the YP38G or YP38, which is at 3.0. Now I haven't actually flown the YP38, but if you'd like to see that in a video, uh, then do let me know. It is a lower battle rating, and it might have worse performance. I'm not quite sure. But um, you know what? If you want to see it, then maybe I'll showcase it. So, moving on to the final game here, we have a Key 49, which is a Big Fat Heavy Bomber. And Big Fat Heavy Bombers, whilst they are very annoying on maps like uh, El Alamein, on maps like Ruhr, it is not so much the case. So, I'm just going to dedicate a little bit of uh, ammo to that guy knock out a gunner, and move straight on. I'm not going to focus on bombers here, because if I am to do that, they're going to be the ones that are right in front of me. I don't want to waste too much energy, I don't want to waste too much altitude, I don't want to waste too much ammo, and I don't want to risk getting damaged, because I have had that before, where one engine gets nicked a little bit, and then it's all over from there. So, Heikel 111 here is definitely noticing me, and is definitely taking some action, but unfortunately gives me a nice big fat profile to fight, uh, to shoot at and so I <laughs> make short work of it and you know what part of me feels guilty part of me doesn't care let me know how you guys feel about uh, destroying innocent bombers with excessive ammunition because I used to do it in the d5 Stuka and I had a lot of fun uh, in the p38 I don't know maybe the SL weight makes up for that uh, little feeling of guilt oh well moving on we're gonna be engaging some fighters and fighters I am not guilty uh, I'm not, not uh, feeling any remorse for. So this particular fighter looks like he's playing a pro gamer move there, going for the F4U in a direct vertical. <laughs> oh my lord. This is going to end very badly for the 109, and whilst I'm going to pitch up for it, it's, it's a done deal. There's no escaping that. And so I turn my attention to the thing at the altitude as mine. So I'm basically looking to go from the highest plane all the way down to the lowest plane in terms of altitude because a plane above you in props is a lot more threatening than a plane below you. Yeah, a plane below you, they can pitch up as much as they want. They're just going to stall out and there won't be a threat to you. In jets, it's a different different kettle of fish because they're not just pitching up to you. They're like going from the floor to 8,000 meters in a matter of 20, 10 seconds. So you have no choice when someone's pitching up at you there. But... If you're in a prop, they can only pitch up about two kilometers tops, and that's at the higher tiers. So here, you're pretty much safe, and there's no way that anyone that is below you by that margin is going to be a massive threat to you. And so I am basically going for the things that are highest, working my way down, and enjoying the little time in between. This Corsair doesn't seem to be able to pay attention, and therefore pays a big fat heavy repair cost. Well, it's not really because it's a premium, and the premiums get lower repair costs, but oh well. That's uh, something to consider. Now, the Spitfire here is the target of choice because the Kai-43 is in a little bit of a funny angle and I have plenty of speed to uh, get away from the Kai-43. Normally, I would do it the other way around, but in this case, I am deciding to do it this way. So, the Kai-43 is nosing... Oh, is, is in a bit of a precarious position here and I'm going to send some rounds downrange and try and get him on fire or something like that. And uh, it works beautifully. And so... Going over, going for the Spitfire is my next call of action. 
The Spitfire looks like he's pretty slow, looks like he's pitching for the P40. And the P40 is taking a bit of a hit, but I am able to get some shots on target. And fingers crossed I'll save the P40 with that little burst. Now, I am very close to the enemy airfield. And one thing I have noticed is that enemies at this tier love to camp their AA. And I have got a video on that. It is on the channel. I've promoted it a million times. And you might see it maybe at the end of the video or towards the end with the end cards. Uh, now, that P38 there just sort of demonstrates what, what not to do. Don't take the bait. Never, ever take the bait because you're just going to end up playing into the ground or being AAA food. So just bide your time, go back, get some fuel, maybe farm some ground targets. Take it easy, take it slow. Do not rush this tier because at the end of the day, a hasty move will end up getting you killed. If you think back to a certain uh, ace in World War II by the name of Douglas Bader, uh, he said something similar but regarding anger. And anger and haste, I believe, go in the same basket. If you do something from based on anger or within anger, I can't quite remember how he phrased it, uh, you'll always end up doing it poorly or you'll end up getting hurt. And that's exactly what he did. He uh, decided, because he was a member of a stunt group or a sort of uh, pattern flying group similar to the Blue Angels back in the day with a, I think it was a Bristol Bulldog, which is some sort of biplane, he decided to fly inverted because everyone was hassling him to do it all day and he was quite frustrated he's like fine fuck you i'll do it ended up crashing the plane and he lost both his legs so you're not going to lose your legs by playing aggressively here but you'll certainly lose some silver lions and you might end up frustrated which is really not a good thing if you want to be nice and chill play the p38 play it nice and methodically and just take things one step at a time this uh Kai-45 that uh, is now in the ground, didn't get altitude, and the Kai-43 here is starting to stall out under me because I have managed to keep my altitude advantage, and that is where the key is with this plane. I know I've said it to death, but you know what? This plane is so much damn fun that it bears repeating. It is just so methodical, quiet, serene, and just a joy to fly. If you have access to this, or if you have the Tech Tree P-38G, P-38E, YP38 or any other low tier P38, this is where it's at. Play this plane, grab some silver lions, enjoy your time and take things nice and slow. Get your altitude, maybe side climb if you're up tiered, use the guns and don't waste your ammunition. You're going to have a blast and honestly I have had a blast playing this plane. It's, it's great fun and you'll always earn some silver lions when you are having more fun. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the XP38G. You can't get it anymore because they took it away from the store, but if you're looking for something, you can buy the YP38. And of course, you can get a little discount by using the code in the description below. But ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the video today. Thank you very much to Ace Defender for sponsoring this video. And fingers crossed, I'll have some excellent water cooling action for you soon. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gents. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.